Hello, everybody. My name is René Bourdage. I'm founder and CEO of Elevado Media. And today, I want to talk to you about key investment opportunities in 2014 related to film entertainment. A word about Elevado Media. We're executive consultants in the entertainment industry related to financing, marketing, and distribution of theatrical feature films and television programming. I'm also releasing a book this winter called Movie ROI, The 12.5 Secrets That Successful Film Investors Keep for Themselves. Our clients are usually investors such as family offices, high net worth individuals, hedge funds, private equity groups. They're usually investing in the entertainment space and they want independent advisory. Producers and di distributors are also our clients. We're all about risk mitigation and ROI optimization. I have a couple of slides for you today. We'll discuss some of the risks involved in the film entertainment space, why some people invest in that space. We'll take a quick look at similarities in the different phases of a film production and a commercial real estate project. I will share with you a couple of risk mitigation tips and the type of opportunities that film investors are currently focused on. The production, distribution, and other exploitation of motion pictures are highly speculative and traditionally have involved a higher degree of risk. It's generally believed in the motion picture industry that less than one out of every five feature length film is sufficiently successful to enable the recovery of production costs by an independent producer. Less than 20%. The success of motion picture production is dependent upon a variety of factors over which the company has limited or no control, such as public taste, critical reviews, promotion and distribution, and the popularity of other motion pictures and other entertainment productions then being distributed. In addition, there are significant risks that could materially delay the completion of a motion picture or uh, even make completion impossible labor disputes, death, disability of a director or star performer, unanticipated changes in the weather, or the health of the economy in general in the United States. Despite the risks, there are investors active in that industry. And according to PricewaterhouseCooper, their media entertainment outlook uh, says that film entertainment in 2012 was a robust, stable, and growing 83 billion recession-proof global industry with a compound aggregate growth rate of 3.1% for 2012 to 2016. If we look at the theatrical performance in 2012, the global box office reached 35 billion. It's up 6% uh, over 2011. That's an increase of 25% in five years. And despite what people believe, in difficult times, audiences still go to see movies. We all remember the fall of 2008. Well, um, the consumer confidence was at its lowest. Even then, in 2009, uh, we, we saw a record year for the U.S. box office. Uh, it entails risks, yes, but it always been uncorrelated to bond and equity markets. The question is, how to invest in ways that will mitigate the risk as much as possible. There are certain types of investment in a film that are carrying higher yields, and we'll see about that. As you can see on this slide, film production shares some kind of a process similar to commercial real estate. It's pretty self-explanatory. You have to start with an underlying property, a piece of land or a story for which you have the right, and you have to develop it. Find the key actors, the talent, or the architect to give it a vision and then to properly plan the production phase. You need to pre-sell a certain threshold of square feet or territories in case of a film uh, so that the bank will green light the construction or the principal photography of your project. Once you have your structure in place, your building, once you shot all the scenes of your film, you need to go in post-production to add the bells and whistles, the sound, the music scoring, the editing, the special effects, color correction, and etc. Not unlikely the, the improvements like drywalls and HVAC for commercial space. Only then can you deliver your film to a distribution company for its commercial exploitation, 
similar to leasing and mortgaging um, your real estate property. The red bars on this graph are the annual number of independent films released versus the green bars, which are the films financed or released by the six major studios, Paramount, Warner, Disney, Sony, Universal, and Fox. As you can see, studios make less movies, and they focus on big-budget temple franchises, films with budget of $100 million and more. They believe their risk is better managed by focusing on films that have a huge awareness. So they've been reducing the number of films significantly. And that leaves an open opportunity for independent producers and independent distributors because the theaters still need movies. So the bracket of films with budgets between 20 and $75 million are now open to investors more because independent producers need to find various sources of financing, of capital, to bring these films to market. In the independent film community, there are films that everybody talk about. Small budget films that became very successful and generated huge amount of profit for their investors. Home runs, everybody would like to replicate. Look at the fourth line of this chart, paranormal activity. What other industry offers the chance of generating $194 million of revenue with a cost less than half a million in two, three years? Hmm. But keep in mind, these projects don't happen every day, and they're certainly not the norm. But the financiers behind them were certainly very happy. That's why you probably noticed that Paranormal Activity has had three, three sequels, all very profitable. This chart is a rough demonstration of how the independent film financing has evolved over the years. In the early 80s, banks used to finance 100% of films on minimum guarantees from international pre-sales. The model was simple. All risk was on the shoulders of distributors who paid generous advances in the form of those minimum guarantees even before the film was shot. Obviously, some films were less performing than others, but for the most part, the business was good because of the home video rental VHS that was booming. In the 90s, when distributors started to reduce their MGs, banks started to finance the gap or the mezzanine by advancing more money against unsold territories. And in the mid-90s, Canada and UK and other countries gradually started to attract filmmakers to their countries by offering what we call tax incentives, tax credits, rebates for production on their territories. More recently, even the United States, some of the states and some cities have joined the party <laughs> and tax incentives are now a crucial element uh, for financing a film. Nowadays, banks have gradually reduced their involvement um, and you have gap mezzanine financiers, tax credits, Equity investors, they've all subsequently complemented the structure for the independent film. We believe at Elevato that investors should focus very often on tax incentive financing and mezzanine financing uh, under a very specific set of circumstances. That market is interesting and it's more competitive. Each type of investment in film provides a risk-adjusted return so equity is the most risky. As we know, most films don't make a net profit. So if profit is your only strategy or only goal, you have to have an appetite for risk. And you want to see that film made no matter what. You may never see your money back or it may take many years before you're recouped. Tax incentive financing is complex because you need to understand the tax intricacies of each jurisdiction. But if you discount it properly, it's relatively low risk because it's provided by governments. The recoupment varies uh, from 6 to 15 months. Mezzanine is more risky. It's also called gap or subordinate debt financing. You lend money against uh, unsold territories after the bank in second position. Um, and it, it provides a nice return when you aggregate the interest charge, the commitment fees, the executive producer fees, 
and the legal allowance that you sometimes can obtain. But it's more risky. You need to have a very trustworthy sales agent and you need to understand how is the senior debt structured because that senior debt is a priority to yours. And the lowest risk position is the senior debt, of course, the bank loan. It's based on discounted receivables from pre-licensed uh, territories. So, how to tap into that space and mitigate the risks? Well, first try to avoid investing in equity in films as much as you can, unless you have a first priority position or if you really feel that that movie needs to be made. And sometimes we do feel like that. <laughs> Always require a completion bond and essential elements insurance before you invest. Also invest through a proper escrow agreement. Preferably land capital against tax credits or international pre-sales from reputable sales agent. Be selective. Find projects that have a high commercial appeal and that is, would be based on third-party assessment based on people that know what the market uh, wants. Always try to mitigate what we call the executional risk as much as you can. By that we mean the, the risk about the execution through the producer, his ability to deliver a successful film, his track record, but also the track record of the director is extremely important. Um, some producers and directors are great in some aspects or some genre. Uh, you have to do your homeworks and understand if this project is really suited for the director and for the producer style. Don't put your eggs in the same basket. Pick three to five projects to diversify your risk and your chances of hitting a home run. Be in senior position to recoup or if you're in second position as a mezzanine lender for instance, require a higher yield and understand how the senior loan is structured. Understand the inter-party and inter-creditor agreements. I would also recommend that you retain a good entertainment lawyer and an independent film financing expert to conduct uh, the due diligence. You always also would benefit from tracking costs during production to possibly save on unspent contingencies, for instance. Movies are both non-market directional and non-correlating. There are periods, obviously, when Profits are shared more widely than others. But the point is that those economic cycles bear no relation to other investments such as real estate, industrial commodities, precious metals, fixed income, equities, international currencies, fine wine, and even art. So for investors looking to balance their portfolio with an asset class that does not correlate with the flow of Wall Street, this holds obvious appeal. But they can go even further in their non-correlation quest. Until now, the focus has been spreading bets across individual Hollywood film slates with studios. However, these studios rely on just a few key decision makers to greenlight their films. This leads to limited variation in the kinds of films being financed, a problem that is exacerbated by the studio's retraction to the 75 plus million dollar blockbuster targeted to the 12 to 29 year old demographic. So to avoid this concentration risk and to achieve fuller diversification, we think investors should seek out a portfolio of independent film investments that are addressing complementary market segments. Now, we also see a family office generational challenge that can become an opportunity when you think of entertainment. Because many younger family members are naturally attracted to the entertainment industry. We've seen many examples where a younger member of the family wants to produce his own project. By nurturing uh, business acumen for the next generation and also uh, cultivating the entrepreneurial spirit by guiding this younger generation, advising them in film transaction, family offices can avoid costly adventures and they can extract a favorable return on investment, but also, most importantly, create that business-driven bond with that next generation that's coming.
In conclusion, I think there are opportunities in the entertainment space. There are risks to be mitigated. And if you need more uh, information, if you have questions, please feel free to drop us an email at the address that you see on screen. We'll be delighted to start a conversation with you. Thank you for your time.